Welcome to Menopause Moment. I'm Susan Barancini Mo. This episode is sponsored by Medterra, our CBD, your health. Today I'm talking about mood swings. Ah, mood swings. Okay, so what's a mood swing? It's really when in menopause or perimenopause, your emotions are all over the place. You have emotional reactions to things that you wouldn't normally react to. Sometimes it comes out of nowhere, like my husband and I are getting along, we're being perfectly nice to one another, we're happy, we're laughing, and then I see something, like he put the dishes in the dishwasher wrong, or he didn't clean up something, or whatever, and I get a flash of anger. That's what it's like for me. Sometimes it's a little bit like being a teenager again, or like being a PMS all the time. And the research does show that about 70% of women in perimenopause and menopause say that they are irritable, they are easily annoyed, they are less tolerant. It's not pretty, ladies. You can also have crying. You can have random crying episodes. You can be weepier than normal. I'm not a crier by nature. In general, I don't cry that much. But since perimenopause and, and this journey, I have realized I find crying happens a lot more frequently. <laughs> There's also increased anxiety, increased depression. These are potential. They don't happen to everyone, but, but they happen to a lot of women. And the question is why? And I know on the show, I've given researchers perhaps a little bit of a hard time saying they don't know why. They don't know why this happens. The thing is, they, they don't know why a lot of things happen. And, and it's not because researchers are bad and it's not because researchers aren't doing their jobs or aren't researching this. They are. But the combination of hormones in our bodies, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, the way they function is so complex and they're like, they've got their tentacles into all different functions in the system. So, so untangling that is quite difficult. And so what we know is they think that the drop in estrogen causes a change in the way the body handles serotonin and norepinephrine, two neurotransmitters that affect your brain, and they're, they're really linked to depression. Researchers have also found higher levels of MAOA in perimenopausal women. That's a brain protein, and it's linked to depression. So it seems that perimenopause and menopause, the changes in our hormones during this time period, affect the way our brains function. And if you remember back to when I talked about brain fog, we know that there, there is some research out there that shows that there's a mild cognitive decline in women in this time frame when you're going through the transition. Now on the other side, when you come back out of the transition, we see that there is a, a reemergence of cognitive ability. So it's just a brief time, it's sort of like pregnancy brain. Now. They don't, so again, they don't know exactly, but, but this is the gist of it. And, and I would say that as a coach, my opinion is it's part hormones and all of the changes in your body. And it's also part coping with the change in your body because we're going through a tremendous transformation, a tremendous change. And we're, it's not just that we're changing in our bodies. This requires a huge adjustment. Our culture thinks of women in the postmenopausal years a certain way. We're old, we're wrinkly, we're Crohn's, we're no longer attractive, we're no longer useful. And, and so there's a lot of thought process around the norms of how we think of ourselves. So for my personal experience, I've adjusted to, I'm still adjusting to, that I'm a woman who cannot have children. And so my, my thinking about my future is adjusting. My feelings about my stories and who will, who will hear those stories and you know, the grieving over that is a big emotional journey. And I think also thinking about the way that you think of yourself as a woman and, and in these, these transition years as well as the years after, it's a big thing to, to cope with. It's a big change. It's a big transformation. And it's a lot to contend with. So we are going to take a short break for a word from our sponsor, and then we're going to come back and talk about how to handle your mood swings, because you can handle them. For many women, menopause comes with hot flashes and night sweats, and they can be brutal. Mine kept me awake all night, so I was tired and cranky all day long. 
I tried all kinds of supplements and CBD oils, but nothing put a dent in my hot flashes. Then, I started using Medterra's CBD oil, and my hot flashes and night sweats were dramatically reduced in severity and frequency, so I wake up less often and get a lot more sleep. Just a dropper under my tongue in the morning and another one at night, and my hot flashes decreased by about 80%. And unlike many of the CBD oils I tried, there's almost no taste to Medterra's CBD oil, which makes it a lot easier to take. Get your CBD oil at medterra.com today and use the promo code MENOPAUSEMOMENT, all lowercase, for 10% off your order. Okay, welcome back. Let's talk about some strategies for handling what I'm calling the menopause monster, our mood swings. Okay, first and foremost, you know what I'm about to say, ladies. Don't take medical advice from the internet. If I, you hear something that you think might be helpful on this show, take it and go talk to your doctor but I am not a doctor nor any kind of medical practitioner. So please do not take medical advice from this show or any other. Don't take medical advice from the internet. Now that we've said that, let's talk about some recommendations. Okay. Hormone therapy is one thing that can help with mood swings in menopause and perimenopause. Now, a lot of people are afraid of hormone therapy, also called HRT, hormone replacement therapy. You don't have to be afraid of it these days. Now, if you have risk factors, you and your doctor need to talk about that. But a lot of the research is now showing that in previous generations, the real problem, you know, we, we connect HRT with breast cancer. And the reason apparently that happened is because it was the intense doses and the long-term use that really led to that. That's really important to me because my mom was on hormone therapy and she had breast cancer twice and didn't make it after the second time. So I'm really thoughtful about whether or not hormone therapy is right for me, I think a lot about that. So far, I think it's not right for me. <laughs> but at any rate, you don't know if it's right for you or not. It's really a decision that should be made with you and your doctor taking into account your unique risk factors. But hormone therapy has been shown to be helpful in terms of mood swings. Another thing that's helpful can be antidepressants. Now, I don't recommend that lightly. I don't like to recommend antidepressants in the whole, but if you are suffering from real depression and intense mood swings, it's worth having a conversation with a qualified therapist, psychiatrist, someone who specializes in that. Too often I think we talk to our general practitioners about antidepressants. You may wanna to talk to your OBGYN or a psychiatrist to really get the low down and make sure you're on the right medication for you. Sometimes it takes dialing it in a little bit and, and you may wanna try different things and see what works, but I don't recommend that lightly. Another thing that's helpful is counseling therapy. It's always great to have someone you can talk to and having a counselor that you can discuss your mood swings and shifts with can be really beneficial. It's also useful to surround yourself with others who are going through similar things. So talk to your friends. They may be going through similar symptoms and experiences. And it's funny until I actually started down this path and started talking to my friends about perimenopause and menopause, I didn't realize how many of my friends were having the same symptoms, but had no idea they were in perimenopause. They were like, oh, is I wake up sweating all the time. I'm like, you know, that's a night sweat, right? What? Yeah. You need to talk to your doctor. That's a perimenopause symptom. <laughs> And, and I didn't know it was happening to me either. So it's great when we as women can come together, surround ourselves supportively and talk about these things because who's going to tell us? Somebody's got to tell, we got to talk to each other. So surround yourself with people who are supportive, other women who are going through similar things or have already gone through it. Our sisters, our mothers, our aunts, our friends, you know, build your little village, build your supportive menopause village. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and don't forget to include counselors and therapists in that. They can be really helpful. Standard things you know I always talk about, exercise, diet, and sleep. Those are really important touchstones for your entire menopause plan. So diet, avoiding processed foods, extra sugars, avoiding alcohol, avoiding extra caffeine, trying to eliminate those processed carbs and extra stuff that we don't need is also going to help you with that menopause weight gain, uh, but it also will help with sleep as well. So make sure you're thinking very carefully and being intentional and thoughtful about your diet. It will really, really help if you get that under control. 
Exercise helps with all kinds of mental challenges. It's been shown again and again to be helpful with mood swings, ADHD, depression, anxiety, stress management. So exercise is a great go-to. And you know sleep has an impact on mood. So, and exercise and diet have an impact on sleep. If you can get better sleep, then you can feel better and have fewer of those mood swings. Meditation is also great and is great for general. We think it helps in that moment when you're meditating, but in fact, meditation helps in the aggregate, helps across the board in your whole life. Now, the last thing I will say today about mood swings, and this is the thing that I probably use the most. It's something I started doing when I had PMS and honey, if you're watching, I know not all the time. Okay. <laughs> but here's what I do. When I have those flashes of anger or irritability or annoyance, I take a minute, I take a deep breath and I ask myself, is the level of anger I'm feeling right now proportional to the thing I'm angry about? Does this make logical sense? Is this rational? I try to just pause myself in that moment and make sure I'm not acting on something that is just, you know, my hormonal mood swing thing and make sure I'm only acting on things that are appropriate, logical, rational. Now you won't always be able to catch it. Like I said, Leo, I know I don't do it every time, but I try, God knows I try. <laughs> don't take menopause as a, an opportunity to ask for a pass from your spouse for bad behavior. I've heard from some women who, who jokingly emailed me and said that they told their husbands, honey, for the next few years, I'm gonna be difficult, deal with it. I'm not a fan of that because I don't think we wanna get in bad habits. And I think that being unkind and giving into irritability and allowing ourselves to be snappy and annoyed and unpleasant with our spouses, it's not a good habit to get into. It's also not a great habit for your relationships. You don't wanna alienate your spouse. This is when you need your spouse most. So really take those moments, breathe in. If you're unable to take the pause, then talk to your doctor, talk to a therapist, and find some things that will help you to really manage and rein that sucker in because you don't really wanna be a menopause monster. You don't wanna be that horrible woman to be around. You don't want your spouse to be miserable. It, your, your husband is gonna be the person who's gonna be the most supportive. He's the one who's your rock. And, and the worst thing you can do is, is send him away from you, push him away. When we are too quick to allow the, the hormones and the mood swings to win, we end up pushing the ones we love most away and you don't want to do that. So try to follow some of these strategies, see if they work for you. Let me know in the comments for today what's worked for you. If you have other suggestions that I haven't mentioned, share them in the comments so others can benefit from your experience as well. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Flash on.